Yes, hello, this is Alex from Hungary. We, li we live here on our small farm close to Balaton Lake. And we live uh, with uh, some animals. We have ducks, we have uh, chickens, we have goats, but we have no cows. So today I like to show you how I'm gonna make a traditional trapista shoit, trapista, trapista cheese. It's a very old cheese from Hungary. It's a very mild cheese, but you can buy it everywhere. But of course, when you make it on your own, it's uh, far different from what you will buy on the shops. And uh, for this purpose, I bought here in the village uh, cow milk. So it's very natural cow milk. And I will show you how I make uh, Trapista cheese. We will make this in our traditional kitchen. It's in Hungary like uh, some other countries in Eastern R R Europe or Russia. There is for uh, winter time a known kitchen inside the house and uh, for summer time such a thing called uh, summer kitchen Yari Konya summer kitchen and we use this uh, for making the cheese here so see you soon this uh, summer kitchen it's very close to the main building but it's in it's standing alone so everything what what is smelling or something it's going outside the in the air and you have no no problem with this so now I'm going inside and here is the old uh, spa, spa herd, it's called spa herd. We are heating just with wood and it's uh, the traditional way. But uh, I really like for cheese making. Of course everything is in good condition here. And uh, I heat it up. I have cow milk uh, inside this vessel, 20 liters. And I heated this up to the target temperature of 32 degrees Celsius. It's uh, now heated up to 32 degrees and I put in the culture for 20 liters. I don't know what's the culture in your country but here it's the uh, same for what you're using when you're making gouda cheese. So it's the same trapista joint what we are making now. It's like uh, culture for gouda cheese and I waited let let the culture rest for uh, five minutes in the milk and now it's I'm waiting for ripening the milk for half an hour and then we will continue so see you in 30 minutes so half an hour has passed now and now I dissolved uh, five milliliters in non-chloronized water. It's it's here. So uh, two point five milliliters per tea uh, per uh, ten liters of milk, and I use twenty liters, so five uh, milliliter of rennet. I dissolved in non-chloronized water, and first, this is important. I have to steer the milk again so that is moving that it's moving it's very important and then while it's moving I'm putting in this uh, rennet that is dissolved in the water and then I'm stirring again but just for one minute not more so from every minute from every direction that I'm stirring in the rennet in the milk and then stop and now I will rest it uh, for another uh, nearly an hour so uh, 45 minutes I think it's enough but you have to check, check then if it's it, it has a clear break or not I don't uh, use uh, some other things for it uh, just to run it and then we will see us in uh, 45 minutes. See you then. Of 
course I will cover it. That no fly fly or so something will go in the make. So now the 45 uh, minutes has have passed, and I want to say before that I don't do not use uh, calcium chloride because uh, I have also this make in just using the rain at a very clear break and I had have made the experience in the past that when I'm using calcium chloride it's not improving the strongness of the curds but uh, after a time or after ripening I experience some bitterness in the cheese and then I make it without calcium chloride and the bitterness wasn't there. So I'm cutting now uh, in small pieces the curds. I'm cutting the curds now and okay so maybe a little bit boring I'm coming back soon. So after cutting vertically and horizontally the curds, I'm using now a whisk and but very smoothly I'm going up and down with the whisk because at the end we like to have curds with the size of uh, peanuts. We are doing this and uh, also now we have a temperature of 32 degrees, that was the first target temperature and now we are increasing the temperature uh, to 42 degrees Celsius, so always in Celsius, 42 degrees uh, Celsius, but we are increasing it very slowly and the, this uh, wooden oven is uh, helping me with this uh, slow process because other than gas or when I would use an electronic uh, oven, it's very going up very slowly. So I'm now uh, increasing the temperature to 42 degrees. And after this, the cheese is ready to press. So to I will show you then. After stirring now for half an hour, I reached the target temperature of uh, 42 degrees and now I will rest the curds for uh, 5 to 10 minutes that they are sinking down to the ground. Then I will take uh, or I will separate the, uh, the whey and press the cheese. So, Hi folks, so we are back again with the finished cheese. We press the cheese softly so depends on what you are using for for pressing either cheese uh, press or just some stones or something like this so it's important it's very soft cheese and i pressed uh, each uh, side for six hours then i made a, a saturated bright brine solution i use uh, 50 grams uh, salt per one kilo of cheese. So in this case I have two kilos of cheese and I used uh, 100 grams of uh, salt, Himalaya salt I used and I make this brine solution and I put in the cheese for 11 hours or overnight. Then I wax the cheese uh, twice with this, uh, I have to admit, very ugly black uh, wax, cheese wax. I would not uh, really not use it again, it's really, really ugly. But uh, it's important to wax twice the cheese. At the beginning I thought, uh, so once waxing a cheese it's enough, but it's not enough, wax it twice. For this Trappista short or Trappista cheese, it's very important, the ripening time. You have several possibilities. In my, op in my opinion, you can put it in your cheese cave or your fridge or whatever 
for minimum of three weeks so three weeks and then you can cost it it's very fr uh, fresh uh, trapista joint what you can buy here also it's very uh, delicious but also you can use a part of it and ripen it uh, further for let's say one month or two months or three months and then you can uh, feel the difference and it's it's worth it so you have the uh, you can choose about the ripening period and I think in every stage it's a very delicious delicious uh, cheese so that's for now I say to you you eat fat or enjoy your meal bye bye from Hungary <laughs>